Hello there, my name's Dave Allen, I'm Good and Geeky, and today we're going to have a look at what we can do to set up LogSeq to work with GitHub and Git, so that we can synchronise our data from one device across to another. Because it's always nice to be able to use that data on your iPhone, your iPad and on your Mac as well, and know that you're going from one to another and all your data is just going to be there. Let's do it. Now to get this whole thing going, there's a few things that you need to do. And one of them is to set yourself up an account with GitHub. So go to the GitHub web page there and get yourself an account. When you have the account, go to this repository here by Charles Chew Git forward slash logseek dash git dash sync dash 101 because there's some stuff we need to get from there. To get these files we need, go to this button where it says code, download zip and get it onto your computer ready to unzip. If you want to read through the uh, details of this here through this readme file, it's a good idea because it tells you why you could be using this and how well it works. So the prerequisites for this are a GitHub account, which is what we're setting up now. You need to have Git on your computer as well. And when we get into the iPad iOS thing here, you're going to be needing working copy, unless you're an Android user in which you want to use that Termux thing. Once you've got GitHub set up, go to Git and grab this software and put it onto your computer. OK, so I suppose you should say what Git is. Well, Git is a way of having versioning on your computer. So what Git does, it will look at a folder and keep track of all the files that are in there. And anytime you make changes, it keeps a track of those changes. And what GitHub does is a way to collaborate with others so that you can push your changes up to a GitHub account and then other people can take those if you make it as a public thing. Or you could just use it privately. So this could be good for writers who want to keep an eye on the changes that they're making with their writing. And basically it means that you can have versions uh, off in the cloud there. And at some point in time, if you need to go back to something that's previous, you can either get it from the Git that you've got on your own computer or if absolutely necessary you might have to go back to the uh, github and bring it in back in from github so it's actually like a little backup as it were to your data so the next thing that we're going to do is we're going to create our private repository on github so what we're going to do is click on this new button here and then we're going to give it a name loggy anything will do and we're going to make it private because it's just for us it's not for anybody else to have a look at we can add a readme file here if we want to, but it's not absolutely necessary. We'll do that later. And we're going to add a git ignore file later. The git ignore file is so that there are some files in the logseq thing which we don't want to track. And we basically can put some stuff in there that will stop them from being tracked. OK, so let's create the repository. It's a good idea to keep a track of this bit here because we're going to create a new repository on the command line. OK. So this is what we're going to do to create our loggy account on the command line on our own computer. So I think it's probably a good idea to get this here and to copy it and put it into a text file somewhere so you can follow this information later on, OK? So I'm going to put that into a text file. In fact, what I'm going to do is I'm going to put this into a logseq file. So I'm going to say new page, GitHub. And I'm going to paste that in there. So basically, they want to follow these instructions to do what I've got to do in the terminal. So let's go to the command line. And what we're going to do next is going to be on our own computer. So let's go to iTerm. So I've created a folder already called Loggy, which is what I'm going to use as my folder for the graph for LogSeq. So let's do that next. So let's cd into Loggy. OK, so here we are in Loggy. So let's uh, follow some of these instructions on here. So the easiest thing to do is to do a copy of this here. So I'm going to copy that there and I'm going to paste that into there. And all I've got to do is just press enter and that is done the readme file. If I do another list of files in there, you see we've got a readme file in there. Cool. The next thing to do is to initialize git so that this folder will be watched. So let's do git in it. We've got a folder now which is being watched by git. And the main folder or the branch is called master. And we need to change that, OK? But we'll do that shortly. So the next thing that we're going to do is we're going to go to git commit first commit. So again, what I want to do is I'm going to copy this here, paste that in there and press enter. And there was nothing to commit because we haven't got any tracked files. We have to use git add first of all. Um, now it says on this here, do git add and do readme or md, but that's the only file in there. 
But what you can do, which is a lot easier, is probably just to do git add and then do a full stop. So after we click enter, those files will be added to the tracked files and put into a staging area and committed to the git repository at the next commit. So this is going to be our first commit and I'm going to press enter and this time that file has been moved over into git and it's being watched. Now the next thing I need to do is to do a git branch and change the branch to main instead of master because we need to have this tie up with what's going to be on github so let's do a copy there and I'm going to do paste in there and do that so now you can see that the branch is now called main which is good and now we're going to do the remote add paste in there again press enter it's going to connect that up with the github account now nothing has gone sent up to the github account it's just connected it they have to actually do a push so we're going to do a push so let's do this one here which is git push copy that and paste it in there and off it goes let's do a git status so git status and everything's up to date and the working tree is clean. So let's go back into this one here into GitHub and see if there's anything happening in here yet. And we'll go to code. So now that we're in this page here in GitHub, we can actually see what we've got. We've got a readme file, which we can go in there and edit if we want to. And it's all done in Markdown, so it's very easy to edit. So whatever we put in there is going to be uh, changed. We can do a preview if we want to as well. And we can do a commit changes when we're finished and just commit it directly to the main branch. Okay, so I'm going to do add file, create a new file. You have the dot in there because it's going to be a file which is going to be hidden on your system. And in this one here, we've got to put our details that we're going to get from Charles's readme page. So what we're going to do here is you look into the logseq back folder and the logseq.recycle folder, and it's going to ignore those because you don't need those sent in up to GitHub. It's going to commit the new file. And we can put an extended uh, description there if we want to you don't need to do that but i've done it anyway so let's commit this new file so now we've got a git ignore file in there so that's cool everything's looking great now the next thing to do is to go back into our folder in here in iterm let's do git pull and it's going to bring in the readme file and it's going to bring in the git ignore file which are both changed off on github so now we're going to move into logseq and connect this folder up and make it our place for the logseq graph and i'm going to go to this one here i'm going to add a new graph and i've just got to choose the folder where the new graph is which is in loggy and i'm going to open that so that makes all the extra folders that are required in logseq in that folder there and what i'll do is i'm just going to add some text in this one here into the first uh, journal entry so that's added that there and we'll do a page as well okay so new page github let's go to that page and put something in it so that's made some changes in there so let's go back to finder now and see what we've got there so let's have a look in finder go into loggy and there now you can see in that folder we've got this pages journals and logseq in there and we've got the readme file and you can't see the dot ignore there because we've got it set so it doesn't show invisible files to change that if i do command shift and full stop shows you all your um, invisible files and folders so you can see the git one there is available now for us to have a look in there so let's go in there and what we want to do is we want to go into this folder called hooks so we are in hooks and then what i want to do is i want to get those files that we brought in earlier so I'm going to go to the downloads folder, unzip this one here. I'm going to go this one here and go to git hooks. And we've got these two files here which we want to put into this git hooks one. So basically we're going to grab that and grab that. And I'm going to bring it and put it into this one here. Okay, so we've got another thing that we have to do in here to make this work. So here we are in this uh, GitHub again from Charles. And what we need to do is we need to select and copy that there, or we can just click on this button here and copy it. Okay, so what I need to do is I need to go into this folder here. Actually, rather than do it in iTerm, what I want to do is I want to do it in Terminal. So I can do this easily by doing a right click on this here and click on Terminal. This has brought up the Terminal. And now it's going to work for me, so I'm going to do Command and V, and I'm going to press Enter. And as you can see now, these have changed into executable files, so it's going to work in our system. Lovely. 
What we're going to do next, let's go back into GitHub. We haven't got anything in there from Logseek. So what we need to do is we need to push stuff from Logseek on our computer into our GitHub account. Okay, so let's do git. We do git add and then full stop. Then we're going to do a git commit. So do git commit dash m and then we're going to put the name of the commit. So we're going to put this inside quotes. This commits it to the local GitHub repository, but it also gets sent to GitHub because of the way we've got things set up. And now you can see we've got all our stuff here, our journals, our pages. Let's go into pages here. And you can see we've got a GitHub MD. This is our file that we created in Logseek. I can click on this one here and as you can see there, GitHub is cool, which is what I wrote in, in Logseek. In fact, I could even write things in this one here if I want to do some editing. So I could go to this, edit this file here, look, and I could add more to this here. So I'm going to type in there, that is really cool. And then go to the bottom here, I can commit changes. Then I can go back into terminal here. So I do a git pull there. The github.md file was changed and you can see there this uh, plus and minus thing here. It means that it shows it was changed. So now I should be able to go into Logseek and see those changes. So let's go back into Logseek. So here we are in Logseek. As you can see that change is already in there and we've got it working nicely. How cool is that? Brilliant. Now then, if we go into this one here, go into the settings for this here, look. Go to settings. And as you can see in settings with a uh, version control, enable git auto commit. So what's going to happen is any changes that you make on your computer in Logseek, after 599 seconds, it will get sent to GitHub or get sent into Git. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to leave this. I'm not going to do anything with it. And I want to come back to it in a uh, time which is uh, longer than 599 seconds. And I'm going to see that change will have been moved over into Git and to GitHub. The next part of this here is going to make it so that we can use these things we've sent up to GitHub in our uh, devices, our iPhone and our iPad. And it's quite easy to set up using some automations in shortcuts. You get these warnings up in here, but I shouldn't worry about them. It doesn't make any difference. I found that it hasn't um, made a difference to how it works. So you just have to get rid of those when they pop up. And you can see this one here, that is what I actually sort of put in there. And that's actually got sent from Logseek up into GitHub all by itself, automatically. This is Dave Allen. I'm Good and Kiki. Have a look out for the next video, which I'm going to show you how to set up the shortcuts so that when you're using your device, your iPhone or your iPad, you can pull down the changes that you've made in your uh, Logseek on your Mac and bring it into this one here. In fact, it could be that you make some changes on your iPad or your iPhone and send it from one to the other. It's all going to go via GitHub and it's pretty cool.